reportedly suggested that there is a 20 to 50 percent chance of our world as a matrix style virtual reality and everything we experience is just a simulation. The report which was issued to clients also implies even if our world was an illusion we would never know about it which is exactly what the machine's about. So Nozick is, is positing is presenting this the thought experiment and Bank of America thinks it's not an experiment. There's a 50-50 chance that we are in a matrix and of course you wouldn't know it until someone opens the door and gets you out of the matrix. There are two tech billionaires who are absolutely convinced we're in a matrix and they're spending hundreds of millions of dollars to try and get us out of it so we can live life the way we want to rather than the way we're programmed to live it. I think it was probably in my intro class I said this and not to my ethics class, but how do you know we're not in a matrix? You don't. You don't. Until someone lets you free, you have no idea. This matrix, however, comes with all the ups and downs that life is supposed to provide us. See, we've been conditioned to believe life comes with ups and downs. There could be an alternative life or maybe another life after this where there's no ups or downs. Life is just pretty smooth. How do you get those numbers? Logarithms. Algorithms? Yeah, algorithms. I put numbers in to get numbers out, I just don't know what they Yeah, well, someone puts them in. It's like, it's like Wall Street. 90% of all trades are done by computers. Program the computer and it'll do whatever you tell it to do right now. So if you tell the computer someone sells 300,000 shares of this, drop the market, it'll go ahead and drop the market, and there's no good reason, but the market will do it because the computer's telling it, which is what the matrix is built upon. The matrix is theoretically built upon logarithms that are telling it what to do and what not to do. No pain, no pain. Lots of pain, lots of pain. I guess then the next important question is what difference does it make? What if we are in a matrix? Go ahead. In my opinion, it doesn't really make a difference because perception is all that you have. So if you perceive it to be your reality, it's... That's, that's probably the most salient point so far. Perception is everything. Marshall McLuhan back in the 60s said, he who controls media controls perception. You all watch the media, right? You're programmed. Every day you're programmed. Back in the day after the Korean War, we figured this out. We were so freaked out by their interrogation techniques. Your eye can only see things so fast. Of course, you don't. You didn't, nobody ever went to a drive-in movie theater, did you? We, you go to the drive-in movie theater. We didn't know this till they told us this is what they were doing. And you sit there waiting for the movie to start, and a concession stand uh, uh, advertisement would come up, and uh, and you know you had a choice of soda, you had a choice of pop or candy or whatever. What you didn't know is in the background was a subliminal message on certain nights saying orange soda, orange soda, orange soda, orange soda. And people would go up and get orange soda. And they had no idea that they were being programmed to do it. They thought, well, I want orange soda. You're programmed to you. I'm not making a judgment. Your generation now is under programming for smokeless cigarettes. You're being programmed. We're all being programmed. Every day you turn the TV on, you're being programmed. <clears throat> Whether it's consumption in the economy, what you're buying, you need the latest and greatest phone. Really? Isn't the old one working? But we, we've been programmed, programmed in politics, you're programmed in religion, you're all programmed. People give you a certain perspective of the world and if you buy into it, then that's your perspective, you get to own it. But it doesn't start with you. Children are programmed from day one, that's why we drew the box on the board. From day one, you're taught the rules, right and wrong, left and right, up and down, all these rules. And because they make sense to us, we incorporate them until something happens <coughs> that causes us to question them. And then we maybe modify them, we change them, we reject them, or we just accept them. So if we were in a matrix, it wouldn't matter, would it? <coughs> Unless, of course, you're Morpheus. <laughs> Which brings me to another salient point.
You have the look of a man who accepts what he sees because he is expecting to wake up. <clears throat> Ironically, this is not far from the truth. Do you believe in fate, Liam? Yeah. No. Why not? Because I don't like the idea that I'm not in control of my life. I know exactly what you mean. Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain, but you feel You felt it your entire life. Splinter in your mind, driving you mad. It is this feeling that has brought you to me. Do you know what I'm talking about? The Matrix. Do you want to know what it is? The Matrix is everywhere. It is all around us. Even now, in this very room. You can see it when you look out your window, or when you turn on your television. You can feel it when you go to work, when you go to church, when you pay your taxes. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. What truth? That you are a slave, Neo. Like everyone else, you were born into bondage, born into a prison that you cannot smell or taste or touch. A prison for your mind. What is the Matrix? Control. The Matrix is a computer-generated dream world built to keep us under control in order to change a human being into this. Thanks, 50-50, we're already there. Tech billionaires are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to try and figure out how to get us out of it. It never even crosses our mind. 
and then Robert Noza comes along and he sticks an experience machine in our face and says, well, how would you like to have this? All your dreams come true. No more pain, no more sorrow, no more sickness, no more sadness. No more pain. <clears throat> well, Nozick says there's an inherent problem with that. The experience machine, he says, you can plug in and have any experience you like. Others can plug in too, so no reason to stay behind to help others. We're all in the matrix together. Do you plug in forever? Why and why not? So that was why we started the, the day the way we did, asking how you would feel about it. What else can matter to us other than how our lives feel from the inside? His insight gives us these objections. Reasons not to plug in. Some of you said this. We want to feel that we should be doing something that we're involved in life, not just having a dream of it, that we're doing something. The good and the bad, they all add up, and they all make for life's experiences, and out of those life experiences, we formulate our own character, we formulate relationships with people, we understand what our place is in the world, or what it could be, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But if we're not doing anything, those things just happen to us. We're not achieving anything. We want to be a certain way, to be a certain sort of person. Plugging into an experience machine limits us to a man-made reality rather than the reality that we want to make. And so you're all involved in life right now. We're going to assume you're not in the matrix and you're all involved in life. And you're trying to make your dreams come true. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And if you make your dreams come true, life is feeling pretty decent. What if your best efforts don't make your dreams come true? but they could have come true if you were in the matrix. And how many times do you have to be slammed down before you finally say enough is enough? Would an alternative reality have been better? So that's the equation that's at stake here. As long as you get to do things and things work out relatively well or really well, well, that's cool. I'm satisfied with life when things don't turn out that way. Does that open the door to the possibility of, well, maybe we could have an alternative way than having to deal with the way that we find ourselves. The moral of the thought experiment, we learned that something matters to us in addition to just experiencing or feeling perhaps what we desire is to live ourselves in contact with reality regardless of what the circumstances or outcomes are. So the relevant question now is, given that we're not in a matrix, think about that for a minute, given that we're not in a matrix. Oh, thank you. Sorry about that. Given that we're not in a matrix, <coughs> are you okay with life on life's terms? I started that way in the class, and I've tried to provoke you into thinking. You can't save everyone. Life doesn't always go your way. Children don't all pop out of the oven just the way we hope they would. Marriages don't always end up the way we planned them. We have very little control over life. We have to accept life on life's terms.